Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM, CFBU. This is Hammer Smash, Joey. And it's Metal Mike. How's it going today, Joe? Doing pretty well, Metal Mike. Doing quite swell. I, w- I could not say the same for this morning. There was some refreshments consumed mm. last night, mm. so I wasn't feeling the greatest. <laughs> and I also um, had band practice, so I have, a, and I was, you know, spinning the hair around at practice, so I had a little bit of a bang over mixed with a hangover as well. A bang over, that's interesting. You never heard that term before, a bang over? No, I haven't. You never heard that after, you know, a metal show where you, you know, swinging your hair back and forth and you come back and you, your neck hurts? It's a bang over. Hmm. You learn something new today, Metal Mike. See, that's where you get on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM is you learn things. You do, yeah. You learn things and you hear us ramble. We basically are here to play you metal and teach you vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, and uh, give you some more insights as to some bands because uh, today, or tonight, we have our very first guest of our new time slot change. We got in a band, uh, Prison Mind is here today, and we're really excited uh, to uh, talk to those fellas. So we'll get those guys in next time uh, we hop on the microphone. Mm -hmm. So we'll get those guys talking all about their band, some music that we have. We got some music right here in my hands. Got the new CD, Disciples by Design. We'll be talking all about that as well as some gigs that these guys are um, coming and when you can see them. So lots to talk about with these guys. Uh, We've got a lot of new music as well. A lot of new music. Yeah, yeah. Well, which one did you bring in? I brought in um, some new Sierra. Which I listened to today, and it's really badass. Really excited to share that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got some new Immortal. They just dropped a new tune. Uh, Skinless's album just dropped, so I got to play a tune off Skinless's new album. And Graveyard, some doom metal. And the new Immortal, that doesn't have a boss in it. Yes, it doesn't have a boss. It's, uh, I believe, Demonaz is taking vocals on that. So uh, we will discuss on how we, uh, we think that sounds. Because that's a big change. They lost a big member, so we will have to... Uh, Both is too busy playing festivals and falling down hills. <laughs> <laughs> that video will never get old, eh? It's, it's so, so good. Great. It's so great. <laughs> oh, man. I saw Both live one time with um, High on Fire. Oh, it was a really good show, man. It was. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a video online um, of Matt Pike and uh, a Both smoking weed together at the <laughs> venue, at, at that show that I was at. So oh. they, they must have got an interview at um, at the Opera House. Uh, speaking of the Opera House, the uh, Vakken Metal Battle is coming up as well uh, at the Opera House June 9th. We're going to give you more of an update on that because we have the winner of the East that happened last night. We'll play some of those guys' music and give you updated on the Vakken Metal. But today it's all m- mainly the show. It's all about Prism Mind. We're going to be t- talking to them and uh, getting you some more insight on them. And they're going to let us know if I butchered that name right. <laughs> if, if I said if I said the name wrong or not, but uh, of we, course we'll be playing songs off the record as well. Oh yeah, throughout the uh, the whole show today we'll be playing some of the tunes and uh, get you stoked on that. So that's gonna be really fun. So let's uh, let's start it with some tunes. Let's get some metal going right now. Uh, metal Mike brought in a tune by uh, Fractal Gates yeah. to start out the show. Tell me a little bit about these guys. Their album just dropped. Yeah, Fractal Gates actually works out well because their album, which is uh, called The Light. The Light That Shines, I believe it's called, uh, dropped yesterday. Uh, they're from France. I would consider them heroic death metal. Heroic death metal? Yeah. That sounds fun. So uh, let's check it out. Here's Fractal Gates, and uh, it's Chasing the Line. Am I right? You got it right, Metal Mike. It's my note is not, my, ro- my notes are wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you got it right but this the time. The brain is right. <laughs> nice. Chasing the Light by Fractal Gates on Hammer Smash on 3.7 FM. Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM CFBU. We're coming off a block of death metal right there. Starting out with uh, what Metal Mike calls um, heroic death metal, Her- Fractal Gates. That was uh, in honor of our our dad, Thor. Oh, yeah, that's right, Thor. He likes heroic metal. <laughs> he does. That's right. He, li- it's, he, he calls it heroic metal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that would be heroic death metal. And then after that, some gore death metal by the band VHS. Um, these guys are from Thunder Bay. We've, we played them before. We uh, opened up our WrestleMania show. With them, and they had their song called "Wrestle Massacre." Well, and that's how yeah, I realized that because I went to their record, and uh, <laughs> yeah, there was "Wrestle Massacre." I was like, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah," we and ladies. yeah, yeah, and then uh, so I, I guess I call them gore death metal because if you look at the music video, it's just all old school horror and that's gore all it is. videos. It's those old school, uh, like cheesy, cheesy horror movies with the really low budget, <laughs> like. Uh, character design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots yeah. of makeup. And it looks great, though, for a music video, for sure. It's amazing. Goes well, well with the music. And then some more death metal, some old school death metal from Chicago. This band's called Morgue, off of their album Eroded Thoughts. You just heard the song Plagued Birth. 
So some death metal right there. But now we're switching gears. We have got some fellas in the studio for our first time in our uh, new our new time slot of Hammer Smashed. We have um, our first band in called Prism Mind. How's it going, fellas? I got your mic uh, turned on. How's it going? Thanks for coming in. We got... Um, Let's introduce the guys first uh, for the Hammerheads listening. That's what we call our listeners, by the way, Hammerheads. Hammerheads. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have uh, we have John and Kelly, both from the band Prism Mind. And uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Talk about uh, what you play in the band and uh, what you what's your role in the band. Okay, I'm John, uh, and I am the lead vocalist, the, well, the sole vocalist in uh, Prism Mind. And uh, Kelly, guitar. Right on. And uh, these guys are here to uh, talk talk all about their new album as well. They got some shows coming up. We'll dig into that. And um, right away, these guys came in and gave our, the album. Stoked to talk about that. We're going to get right into that right now because we're going to play some of your music right after this. So let's, uh, let's talk about the, the album cover first. Let's, let's knock it down right out of the park. So we got a giant, like, a robot guy <laughs> on, on the front. Can you tell us about the uh, the album art that you have? Okay. Um, I, I did the album art. Um, and uh, we... We don't really have a formal name for for this character. Um, we call him Robo Dude. Although uh, it would be interesting to give him a name, we haven't got a name for him. Um, Suck it up, we'll get a name. Yeah, we need we need a name for him. So, um, but we're all kind of science fiction fans, and uh, so it just seemed appropriate that uh, uh, some kind of a robot or some kind of you know interesting art in that direction would would suit our music. And um, yeah, that's pretty much. It was a concept we. We used on a few of our singles when we uploaded our stuff on to uh, iTunes, and so really the album cover is, is is an evolution of of you know the original pieces we'd done with the singles, and now it's kind of stuck, and we're probably going to continue to use that robot character for future releases. That's awesome, right. Eddie and Vic. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. basically, right. <laughs> and you said. Um, you guys are big sci-fi fans. Did a lot of that go into the album? Is there any influences of sci-fi movies or anything like that going into the album? Not specifically, but lyrically, I I like to kind of delve in that and just you know hint at that. I have in the past in other bands and other songs. So, um, but yeah, I, I I do like that aspect of 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 you know using the sci-fi as a reference or as a, as a you know. And inspiration. So, Great storytelling yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can get so many different song ideas oh, from that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Space. I was listening to uh, the last song on the record, Void uh, 514. Mm -hmm. And that, is that about aliens coming down? That's the vibe I was getting from it. No, but that's that, that you're the first to kind of mention that. Um, Void is more about kind of the idea of the afterlife, um, okay. that we don't really know what's, you know, what's what happens after death. So um, that's what Void 514, and the 514 really is, <laughs> is interesting. In the demo version of, that Kelly had given to me, it was written in, on May 14th. So oh. 514. So the working title was 514. 514, oh. but it also works as like kind of a, like a biblical reference of, you know, a verse, chapter, uh, you know, when you see John 514 or whatever. So that's how that came about, Void 514, yeah. Is there a specific pack, uh, like passage that uh, is five fourteen that you've looked up or? No, not at all. No, okay. it's but the, I mean, there's certainly some, you know, references to the afterlife or you know, it was kind of like you know, not a knock at religion, but um, you know, just kind of like, okay, everybody, what do you think? What's what's going to happen after we die? Where are we going to go? What's right, what's right. what's is there a place for us after we leave this horrible place? You know, we Earth? should be looking up five fourteen to see if there is something. You might Probably. get a whole new song out of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. And that was just a working title. I had um, we have it. We have a thing actually when it comes to working titles. There's generally a theme, and that is Trailer Park Boys references. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. We have these songs. They're very, they're just they're babies, and we have to come up with just something to, to call them. Right. And so you know, one of them was uh, Water Under the Fridge, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, yeah. A Toe to Sew was another one. <laughs> Uh, and so I, I honestly I had nothing for this one. I just titled, I just gave it the date that it was conceived, I suppose. May 14th. <laughs> Fair enough. Whatever year it was. And uh, But John thought, hey, I'm going to stick that on the end of the actual mm. title. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, He's like, yeah, it'll be cool. I'll be like, all right, go for it. Hey, speaking of titles, um, the album is called Disciples by Design. Who came up with that uh, name? And can you tell me a little bit more what that means? What do you think that means? Um, 
I think it's just more thought provoking than anything. It, I, I, I wouldn't say it had a solid like reference uh, or a concrete reference. Um, I think when you just think about the title, it, it kind of yeah, thought provoking. I don't know, just kind of makes you think. Kind of by your own interpretation, and you, you kind of get your own thought. The listener gets their own thought as well while they're listening to it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I yeah, did that. I think a lot of people follow. Well, let's, let's put it this way: a disciple is what someone who follows, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. By design. Doesn't that sound like there's something... It's orchestrated. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I like that. Which, you know what, I, I think you'll find that there's some lyrics um, within the album, in, even if it's subtle, that suggest that, or have, mm. have inferences to that. So okay. it, just seemed, it just seemed to make the most sense. And uh, I was looking up, you guys were originally called, uh, was it uh, Philosophy? Or? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then you guys took a hiatus... We took a member change. <laughs> oh, a member change. Okay. Yeah. Which, which, of course, you know, provided a, a hiatus. Um, yeah, that unit uh, did not last long in no. in, in its original state. Um, yeah, it just wasn't working out with the singer that we had at the time. So, what uh, what prompted the name change, basically? Um, well, we thought we're starting over. Okay. From so, nothing, essentially, right? I mean, we we did one show as that band. Oh, um, I see. Right, so it was just sort of like, eh. And then when we got John, uh, it just, we thought about it for a while, and we're like, you know what? Let's not worry about the old name. Let's just go with a new one. Let's just start completely over. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Because no one knew who we were anyway in the first place, so not fair. it's not like we had a legacy to <laughs> uphold after one show. <laughs> it's not like when Sabbath changed her name to Heaven and Hell, right? Well, there you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see why they did that. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, we're going to um, start cooking into this album then really quickly because we're going to be talking more with these fellows throughout the show. We're here until 11 tonight, so we got lots of time. We're going to be uh, coming back with these guys, talking more about them, and uh, let's hear some of the music off Disciples of Design. And um, track seven I have loaded up. I already forget the, the song title. Which, which, uh, which song did you choose? Last already? Breath. Last Breath. Okay, so we're going to hop into that one. Anything you guys uh, can talk about with this tune going into it right now for the Hammerheads? I would say it's one of the... Uh more up-tempo tunes, a little more thrash influence. Um, we didn't really want to go too into that because I think that's kind of done, like a lot of bands do a very good version of thrash metal. Mm -hmm. But uh, to have a little bit of a taste of it, I think, because there's nothing really like that on the album. So really. this one kind of stands out a little bit. It's a little bit more different than the other tunes. Uh, I think so, yeah. There's a few more, uh, more traditional metal sounding things on that song. Nice, nice. Right on. Well, we're going to fire in that song right now as well. Some more tunes off the album Disciples by Design. Uh, but we're going to start out right now with Last Breath. Or Last Breaths. They breath. say Breath. Okay, okay. Don't want to screw that one up. <laughs> Here we go. We got Last Breath by Prism Mind on Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM. Of all your hopes and dreams, and it's on your eyes are worth 
Hey, you're back to Hammer Smash with Hammer Smash Joey over here. And I guess it's Metal Mike, but uh, don't worry about me, <laughs> because we got Prism Mine right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We got half the band, though, with us. We got uh, John and Kelly over here, and uh, we're missing the bass player and the drummer. Let's quickly jump into that right now, though. The drummer, Mike, um, Mike uh, Harshaw. Did I say that right? That's it. Okay, right on. He is um, he's the drummer for D- Annihilator? He was in Annihilator for several years, yep. Now that is pretty badass. How did you pick this guy up? I, you know, actually, it's a kind of a funny story. Um, he sent me an anonymous message. Like, I had never met the kid before, right? I never mm-hmm. met the guy. He sent me a message on Facebook several years back saying, Hey, I saw you do an acoustic show in Grimsby somewhere, and I was drunk, and I yelled out, Hey, play Poison Was the Cure from Megadeth. Whoa. <laughs> and you did. No way. And he goes, I never forgot that. <laughs> so here we are like three or four years after that that incident. And he's like, so I'm looking to put together a Megadeth tribute band. And, and your name just came back to me like I thought, that's the guy I got to get. Because if he can play that on a <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If he can play that, for sure. He can <laughs> so, rip it up I mean, on an electric. It, right, exactly. So uh, and in his introduction, which was like you know, this long in the message, he said, so yeah, I play in this band Annihilator. And I'm like... Wait a minute, wait, Annihilator. How does a guy from Grimsby end up an Annihilator? (laughs) And I'm like, the Annihilator? Like, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. Well, long story short, we never found our Dave Mustaine Mm -hmm. tribute band. (laughs) So uh, I I said to him, look, I've got this other thing on the go, an original thing, which was, at the time, was Philosophy. Okay. Um, So he was brought into the fold. He dug what we were doing, and, um, and then we were off. And then we stopped and kicked someone out, and then we're off again. And so, and you, the, the the new lineup right now with you, you, uh, John, Justin, and um, Mike, you guys are all. Uh, that, how long has that been together? How long has that been? Uh, 
since that, 2013, the end of 2013. So yeah. we're coming up on a, on five years. Five years as together. a band, yeah. yeah. And um, I was checking some other stuff online of uh, some other release that you guys had. Were those just EPs, basically, kind of like these songs off of Disciples by Design? Just were those songs they were, cooking before? They were singles before? at the time. They okay. were just released them as individual singles because they were recorded. We wanted to get something out there because um, we felt and we, we feel strongly about the fact that you know it's it's important to have you know our content out there, and we needed to have something that people could kind of grasp onto. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we released just. You know, I think a handful of the songs at the time, or or you know, spaced out every so often. So that was just to get the ball rolling, just to get a couple songs going. Well, because we were playing, we were gigging at the yeah. time, and just to promote, just to have something out there, right? So we weren't complete, we weren't ready for an album yet, but we were, we had enough material to do an opening set, six, seven songs, whatever. Okay. So the recordings John was talking about were to you know to kind of say here, by the way, we yeah. this is what we sound like. Okay, right on. And then now eventually those all. Um, got together and then yeah. here comes this album uh, but I want to talk a little bit more about you guys we, we started out this with talking about your drummer from Annihilator uh, you, you guys got some pretty cool backgrounds as well you're a guitar teacher Kelly you, uh, yeah. uh, why don't you tell me a little bit more about that that's up in Hamilton uh, yeah I teach out of Hamilton from uh, from home I've been teaching for 26 years now oh wow yeah a long time it's older than I am I started when I was 9 <laughs> <laughs> you were teaching when you were 9 no I studied uh, playing guitar oh, when I was 9 oh. so I studied, sorry I started teaching when I was 16 Okay. Well, that's, still, um, that's still young. To where's you, yeah, where'd yeah. you get your your background from? Did you go to school for uh, guitar? Uh, not, not for very long in a formal situation. I took uh, private lessons uh, from this teacher in Hamilton. Okay. Um, at the time, for about four years, and then he suggested, or I, did he suggest? No, he suggested I don't go to college for music because I had expressed interest in it. Okay. And he's like, hey, you know what? I've been to that program, and he goes, it's a good program, but. Honestly, I don't think it's for you. I think you could get everything you need just by studying on your own and, you know, taking a lesson here or there. And I, because he, he saw that I was soaking everything up. Yeah. Right. So he didn't think that there would be much value in me going into the factory of an institute like the you music program. Your, your, uh, creativity, right? right? Well, it's not even so much that. I think he knew where I was going and he just having been through the pro program himself he said mm, it's probably going to steer you into areas you're not really going to be too keen on turns out he was right mm -hmm. but it was a great experience i did have a good time there and met a lot of cool people and, and did learn some stuff obviously but well, by that point i'd already been i'd already been playing for seven or eight years nine actually nine years yeah, so you had a long long background Before in guitar I went there yeah what um what would you say your guitar playing style is more classical jazz uh, where, where is um, I have an interest style? in all of it you could even throw bluegrass in there too yeah if you want. Uh, that's it's great all in there so some of my favorite players would be like you know John Petrucci okay or uh, Steve Morris Al Di Miola um, it really depends on the genre right uh, Vinnie Moore is another great player I, I look up to so anyone who just kind of you know makes the hair yeah Oh, that's for sure. Which is subjective. You, get, you, get, you gotta feel it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's I totally agree with that. Yeah. Right on. So there you got the uh, background right there from Kelly and John. You got a pretty uh, cool background as well for vocals. Uh, you did theater for twenty years. Yeah, I'm, I'm still doing theater every so often. If, I, if there's a show that comes up, I'll still do. Uh, well, and I'm, I should probably clarify because um, it, it's theater, but it's I haven't done a lot of musical theater. I have done some. But a lot of it is uh, the musical reviews, where there's um, it could be a particular theme. Like I've done, a, I've done a Motown show. I've done a couple of doo-wop shows. I've done um, uh, you know some uh, retrospective shows like six you know 60s or 1970s. So there's usually a theme. But um, yeah, they were all based around a community theater group um, in Anca based in Ancaster, Ontario. So uh, I've been with them. I've done a lot of shows with them since 1995. Yeah, so the the experience is, has been great. Uh, great way to learn how to harmonize and how to um, how to <laughs> reserve your voice, how to how to save your voice. Because these shows, they, they could be, I mean, the rehearsals alone are pretty intense. Oh yeah, you're singing for two hours straight sometimes. So you have to learn. You're, I mean, you're learning how to project. You're learning how to how to how to reserve. And then you know you get to showtime, and sometimes your your voice is, is burned out. Um, but 
I mean, there's for me, it's been, you know, what a what a, an incredible resource for you know for for a singer, uh, and to sing in so many different styles too. Um, that that's been just nothing but uh, nothing nothing better than just getting getting in there and getting the experience from all kinds of styles and different. That, genres. That's got to help too, being yeah. on live for sure. Like, I'm, uh, it's coming from a vocalist as well. One of the things that uh, you know kills me on stage some, sometimes is mainly the endurance and like you like you were saying, uh, just the reserve mm. of your voice and you know something that I'm working on as well. I, I'm assuming that definitely helps you while you're on stage with all the energy going. You guys, you know, head banging, doing whatever, and you kind of got to balance your your health, your physical state with your uh, absolutely your, your vocal sound. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That, and 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 in several of the Prism Mind shows that we've done, you know, if I get a cold, man, it's like I gotta be I gotta be really. I gotta sing in a different way just to, just to get through a particular show, you know. So I, I gotta really be mindful of uh, <laughs> who I'm around. <laughs> I don't, I can't, I can't afford to get sick. So oh yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Uh, and especially in the particular style that I sing, you know, I sing, sing. So um, any time I get sick, it's gonna affect that. So. So how did you get involved into them? Just basically doing like heavy metal or just singing in bands, opposed to just doing uh, theater. <clears throat> I, I'm well. I mean, gosh, since I was very young, I was always seems like I've always been in a band, a rock band of some sort. So, uh, the theater thing came more of an accident. I had a girlfriend who thought, you know, I, I could, I would, I could, <laughs> I could be a play a part in uh, the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Whoa! And and I thought, you know what? That's kind of interesting. I've I've never really thought about doing musical theater before, and so I thought I looked at it as a challenge. And um, I guess she kind of saw the kind of personality that I had. I'm, I like to be kind of animated every so often, so she thought, you know, I, you could also do that that side of things too. So uh, I tried out, I got in, and I got a, I got one of the main roles right off the hop, and that kind of gave me a little bit of uh, encouragement to kind of continue doing that that thing. It was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, 1995 was my first show, Jesus Christ Superstar. Wow. I played the part of Peter. So and uh, how nervous were you for your first performance on, on the? Uh... On the whole play, I, um, I don't usually get nervous. Uh, the, the, I was nervous in my when I was very young performing, you know, like grade one, grade two, grade three, in front <laughs> of the entire school population, doing singing in front of the, you know, the school. But the, I don't get nervous. I, I get more uh, excited, you know, anticipating a performance than anything, uh, like anxious to perform as opposed to, oh, you know, I don't get like that anymore. <laughs> That's well behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still in that state a little, still being a little bit nervous before shows. <laughs> but it's a good nervous. Yeah, thing. it is. You, you, you get the, the butterflies in your stomach. Yeah. But then once you know, once you're actually, you guys know, when you're on stage, you're doing what you're doing. Time stops. You, mm -hmm. you just go. You just do what you got to do. Yeah, really. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, your when you, we're gonna see you guys on stage as well. Speaking of that, uh, we're gonna hear some of your tunes right now, and uh, we'll get some more tunes rolling. And after that, when we're back with Prison Mind, let's talk about uh, some more of the shows. When you guys are coming around and when we can see you guys next as well. So let's hear some more of some Prison Mind right now on Hammer Smashed. Uh, we're going to start off with the first track off of the album Disciples by, by Design and Pawns of the Damned. You want to give a little bit of an intro on this tune, what you can say about this song? Uh, what I would say is uh, this is one where you're going to have no lack of bass in your face. <laughs> oh, Metal Mike will like that. A lot, of, a lot of metal, it's buried. Let's face it, right? Mm -hmm. But... We're pretty careful in the way we orchestrate the guitar and the bass and everything, and this is one where the bass really shines through. You'll hear it right off the beginning. And oh. I'd like to mention, uh, listening to this whole album, the production is is amazing because you can actually, in each song here, every instrument independently. So awesome. yeah, thanks. That is a, a, Thank something you. I noticed right away off the bat when I heard the first song. Is John, you can do, do you want to tell them uh, the the format in which you mixed and mastered the album? <laughs> the format. Oh my goodness! If I if I give this away, people are gonna think really, really. Uh, I don't know what they're gonna think. Um, well, the the album was mixed in GarageBand. Oh really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> it was mixed in GarageBand, uh, and most of it was recorded independently, where each guy basically recorded their own parts, and uh, and then the the parts were kind of you know mailed to, you. mailed to me, and I assembled it like like a puzzle. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty cool way of doing it. it. Interesting way, yeah, it as opposed different. to live off the floor. It wasn't yeah. done that way at all. Um, so yeah, it, it was. I had done my my own solo album prior to this, uh, two or three years before, uh, in the same way. And uh, 
So yeah, it worked, and uh, we, you know, it's kind of interesting because people have said to us, you know, you when you perform, it doesn't sound like any different than how you how it was recorded in, you know, multi-layered or whatever multi-tracked. We perform it pretty much the way it sounds. You know, it doesn't sound any different. So um, in that way, I think we have a very organic sounding record. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and that's actually amazing how, like you just said, you just did it off GarageBand, and it sounds fantastic. Well, that just goes so. to show you it's not, you know, you can get a lot out of a little. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't need uh, a million tools necessarily to get something cool out of it. But you don't need to oversaturate it with, yes, all, exactly. or with other stuff, you know. Yeah. The basics, you get, it, get her going right there. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason why Pawns is the uh, first track off the album? Wasn't it the last one written? It was one of the one of the last ones written. Um, the the re I think the reason the pawns is it, the song itself just has a has an impactful start, an impactful beginning. So we I think we just felt it was best suited for the beginning of the of the album, just to give everybody a good punch in the face. It's got a little bit of everything that we. If someone had to point to one track or make us point to one track to say, okay, what's one song that has a little bit of everything in it that represents you guys? I think that one pretty much covers it. Right on. So let's jump right into this. Uh, you're the first track of the album, Disciples by Design by Prism Mind, is Pawns of the Damned on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM.
Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. You just heard Pawns of the Damned by Prism Mine, who is here with us in the studio today. And, hello, um, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. We were just holding the coconuts with the, uh, <laughs> the fellas. <laughs> And the people listening right now are thinking, why, why are they holding? What coconuts? Is that what That's they're about. calling them now? Coconuts. Yeah, is that what they're calling them? <laughs> <laughs> well, Cannibal Cam was telling us one time when we take a selfie, you got to have your hands up in the air. and like you're holding coconuts. Yeah, we'll hold the coconuts and have the metal face. Or Vince McMahon's grapefruits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just got a picture with these guys, so we'll post that up on the Facebook in a little bit as well on, and as well on the, uh, the podcast, which will be out later this week. Now we're going to take a sidestep here. We're going to do a little segment I wanted to do last week, but uh, we just didn't really have the time. We had so much to do. It was Joe's birthday, and he ate the cupcake that I rigged with oh, the hot yeah. sauce. So, guys, last week was my birthday on Hammer Smash, so I came in and basically just played a lot of, like, uh, my favorite tune, like a lot a lot of Sabbath, basically. There was a lot of Sabbath on this show, and Metal Mike decided to give me a birthday present. He gave me a cupcake, and I, you know, it was a pretty awesome cupcake, and I'm like, oh, this is great. He tells me to eat it on air, and I'm eating it on air, and um, <laughs> there was hot sauce inside it, a lot no. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It's not where we thought that was going. <laughs> but it was, it was funny, because like, I was eating, I was really enjoying it, and Mike's like, his face was, oh, what the hell, why is he enjoying yeah, it? Yeah, reacting to it, and I was going like, he's just eating the icing, right? And I guess the lady didn't put enough hot sauce in the icing. I was like, eat the bread. <laughs> okay, my question is, what what kind of hot sauce did you put in it? You know, I, I'm not sure. There was no. something I found at my dad's house. Ah, okay. <laughs> mystery hot sauce. It was sauce. like peach colored, and I just told the lady to put half the bottle in. Oh my. Speaking of hot sauce, one time as well on this show, we did this segment where I ate uh, flash bang hot oh, sauce. Flash Have you ever heard of that hot sauce? It's that. literally like the hottest hot sauce ever. It it's, comes in like a grenade bottle, like a flash bang Yeah, it's like bottle. insane. And okay. he, he gave me like... A pinhead's worth to put on my tongue, and while I did it, I had to read uh, oh, some metal lyrics. I wrote Venom. Lyrics. I think it was something about hell and nomine de nostri. I think yeah, that, something, so, like that. something like that. And I nomin satanus. Or yeah, yeah, something about hell and fire. <laughs> and um, <laughs> while well, his mouth is on. Yeah, literally by, by the what was it? The the second verse. I I was crying. <laughs> oh my god! I was blubbering my words. It was. It was crazy. Fun stuff on Hammer Smash. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to jump into this segment now. And I found two Canadian bands, two Canadian speed metal bands. Um, one from the 80s, um, 1988, and then one from 2018, so 30 years apart. And um, I just want to play them back to back and maybe compare them. Yeah, we'll come back, we'll discuss, see how, see how you know, thrash has changed and over the years for sure. 30 year span is a mm. pretty, pretty big gap. So the first one I'm going to play is by a band. They're from BC. They're called Armoros. Or maybe it's just English and Armoros, I don't know. But <laughs> the uh, the song is called Remember Michelle. And the second song is by a band called Manacle from Toronto. And the song is called Journey's End. So we're going to play them back to back for you on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. <laughs> Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. We're just coming off some manacle with the song Journeys. And before that, Armoros with their song, which was entitled... Remembering Michelle? Remember Michelle. Remember Michelle. Okay. What did Michelle do? What I remembered you, that one. What are you going to remember about her? <laughs> and yeah, we did a little comparison because there was 30-year difference in the thrash uh, with those two bands. And uh, Metal Mike, right off the bat, I want to say I like the first one better. Yeah, you think totally. so? Totally. I, I, I dug it right, right away. The vocals had a, just a... It's a bite to it. Uh, I liked the um, the uh, just the the production of it. It sounded kind of a little bit grittier, and I I, I like that with my thrash. Mm -hmm. I personally with, with the thrash, it's got to be a little bit grittier because it, it is you know it's tougher music. Well, and it's definitely a, it's a sound of its time. Like that was straight up, you know, that's the eighties. Yeah, right? for, you know? for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, it's uh, tough. It, that is tough to replicate uh, with, especially with that new band. Um, Man, uh, what was it? Manacle. Uh, Manacle. But uh, the. Uh, the newer speed band, they were uh, production was a lot higher on that. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. But uh, no, it's just me. That's personal preference. I like it a little bit, a little That's bit cool. grittier. Maybe uh, you know you can message us on the old Facebook on Hammer Smash One Three Point Seven FM. Let us know what you think, and or uh, maybe suggest another speed metal, thrash metal band that you want us to uh, to play on the air to blow our minds. Yeah, for sure. We were talking, we were just talking uh, with Prison Mind. Uh, well, the songs were playing all about thrash metal. Actually, Kelly was telling us all about. Uh, Megadeth, and when you first heard Megadeth, and um, when you first heard Rust in Peace, and then um, literally just actually right before we got on here, you showed me uh, 
uh, another thrash band, The Crown. And you just showed me that uh, how they had this. They totally had the uh, the doors beat in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Texas Radio on the Big Beach on um, <laughs> mentioned right away. But yeah, that was that was pretty sweet. So let's get some thrash going right now. These guys suggested some thrash tunes as well that they want to hear. Yeah, and you were talking about how you um, are a big fan of Megadeth, and you've seen Megadeth how many times? Uh, Seventeen now. Seventeen times, and uh, I suggested this song here by a band from Brazil named Atomica, and um, their vocalist is really going for that Dave Mustaine sound. And so we're going to play that, and <laughs> maybe we could talk about that yeah, a little for bit. Sure. Um, the song is called "Kill the Hero." And you're going to hear it now on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. This is Hammer Smash 103.7 FM CFBU. Coming off a big block of thrash right there. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of insight on those two songs. We just heard um, Overkill and the song called The Armorist. And that was John's pick. John, uh, John from uh, Prison Mind. we got the fellows over here. If you're just tuning in with us, got uh, John and Kelly from uh, Prison Mind and uh, we asked a couple tunes that they wanted to uh, play on the show Sean suggested The Armorist by Overkill and Kelly suggested um, uh, Testament DNR yeah. and uh, both just absolute rippers uh, I'm really stoked to go look into uh, more of Testament what was that album called again? The Gathering Sorry. I believe it was 2000 The Gathering? Oh, Gathering. oh right on yep. yeah, we will uh, we'll check that out for sure uh, but give you a little insight of what these guys wanted to hear on the uh, on the show for sure a lot of thrash going on right there. But uh, let's talk more about some pri- Prison Mind and how you could see these guys coming up with their uh, their next show. Is uh, is it the 18th? The, uh, May 18th, yep. May 18th at the Geekery. That is the local show. And um, I'm like, what do we got on there for the bands? Well, coming up at the Geekery Pub in Niagara Falls, which, by the way, is only $5 cover, so there ain't no excuse why you can't go to that one. Uh, we got... Um, opening up the show is Battered Egos. That is in a weird spinal tap situation. <laughs> uh, starting off that show. And then we got Last Rites. And then uh, a band that I'm going to absolutely butcher their name is uh, Lycanthro? Lycanthro? Lycanthro. Yeah. Lycanthro? From Ottawa. Yeah. They're from Ottawa. Okay, that's awesome. And then obviously headlining is Prism Mind, you guys. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, anything we can expect from the show? You guys going to be bringing your CDs uh, to, to sell? People can pick up your CDs, uh, CDs get shirts, shirts, mugs, shirts, stickers. stickers. We got it all. We'll be playing the whole album front to back. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Well, so yeah, maybe not in the order of the album, but we'll do the whole thing. Okay, that's uh, that'll be uh, pretty sweet for sure. Yeah. We'll definitely have like an hour set. Everyone yeah. can tune into that. And uh, yeah, you, that's uh, this Friday, May 18th at the Geekery. Definitely. Uh, all you locals, you gotta show up to this one. This will be a really fun one, um, as well as uh, you get some more out of town as well. The next one is uh, the Hard Luck on the twenty fourth. Yes. Uh, and that one's in Toronto with uh, it's an album release with a band called Slide. The yeah, slide. the Slide. The yep. Slide. Okay. There's some friends of ours. Uh, we've done a few shows with them. Um, we're bringing them to Hamilton. They bring us to Toronto. And okay, yeah, and uh, yeah, you're playing with uh, them again as well the next day. Yes. At this ain't Hollywood. With a band called El Pacino, which is an amazing band name. That's sweet. <laughs> El Pacino. That's great. That's a good one. I like that. That'll be a lot of fun as well. And uh, so for all these shows, you guys going to be playing the uh, the album as well? You said back-to-back, but different uh, or different uh, orders, for yeah, sure. Yeah, probably do them in a slightly different order. Um, okay. But, yep, yeah, as much as uh, time permits, we'll try to do the whole album. All right, no, you definitely got to go check these guys out. That's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And while, uh, while actually we're on the topic of shows, let's run through a little bit of the catalog that the Geekery is going to be putting on because they got... Oh, God. Of, yeah, these guys are stacked things. with shows. So, yeah, well, we're on that topic. So that one is May 18th, so you better check that one out. That's this Friday. And then um, Saturday, June 16th, we have Dumpster Mummy, Dusk Walker, formerly of The Offering. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, Various. Who are those guys? Yeah, yeah, some, some band. Some band, yeah, yeah. Joe Blows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Friday, June 29th, we have Black Collar, Black Collar Union, Big Dirty. Big Dirty! Slumber Dust. Slumber Lust. Oh. Remember, remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Heavy Waves, which is uh, two of the uh, three members of Astral Witch, I believe. Oh, is it? Oh, that'll be fun. And then, uh, then we got Friday, uh, the 13th of July. So Friday the 13th, if you can't make it to Dover, you can make it to the falls to check out um, Gypsy Cheath Goliath, Old Time Moonshine, who are my personal uh, favorites on this card. Cause nice. I've seen Gypsy Chief too. They're uh, they got three guitar players. They bring on the Doom pretty heavy. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's gonna and, be uh, good. The Barrel Rejects and coming from Texas, uh, Thunder Rosa. 
Get out of town from Texas. From Texas. Wow. So if you can, if they can come from Texas to the falls, you can come from the falls you can come to the falls. From your mom's basement <laughs> to the falls. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, last but not least, Saturday, May twenty sixth, is uh, Bob Noxious. Um, then we got the slide, chain fall, and uh, very very small letters there. I believe that says crutch. Oh, cool. And the slide will be playing with Prism Mind as well. Like I mentioned, uh, May 24th and 25th. Uh, we'll post that on the Facebook page uh, as well, going into those shows. But, uh, yeah, don't miss that. You, they're coming around on the 18th. And um, do you guys have anything else planned as well with more uh, shows coming up in the summer? Are you guys going to rock a tour or anything? Uh, what else do you have planned? I think we're going to focus on writing. Uh, we're, we're really kind of... Our album is a year old, and it, although it doesn't quite feel like a year, um, I mean, it's been, I mean, things have gone by so quickly, but we're really itching to get some new material, so I think that's kind of the next. Do you have uh, new, more riffs in the bank ready to go? Uh, a uh, few. Yeah. Yeah. Got some stuff kind not of really started. Started, yeah. Yeah. But we're not one of the, or at least I'm not one of those guys who writes a million riffs and then selects the best. Mm hmm whatever and whittles it down in other words we've all nine songs on that album that's all we wrote oh really yeah so we didn't do let's write 25 and then we'll whittle it down to 15 and then we'll you know you really hone your craft yeah, yeah you we start with one we go yeah we like the beginning of this shape it craft it done how, how does the songwriting come is it start with the uh the, well, you're, you're the guitar player, so you, yeah. does it come with really a riff, or you, do you come up with a lot of the, the main riffs, and or it the starts, bass player comes in as well? me, but I start with drums first. Okay. So now that our drummer Mike has an electronic kit, and he's able to record basic ideas and send them to me, uh, he didn't have that really for the for the the you know the making of that album. So basically I used a, a software drum program, and I didn't just start by noodling around like most guitar players would do, right? You mm -hmm. around, you go, oh, hang on, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And you milk it, right? Yeah. This came from me picking a cool drum uh, section or segment that was built into or programmed into, uh, what do I use? Was it addictive drums. Mm -hmm. And I, I just pretended that that was Mike. And I just pretended Mike said to me, hey, Cal, this is what I've got. What would you play over this? So it, it, everything started from drums first. And then me going, hey, what would I do to complement that? Hmm. Interesting. That's a very that's a different way and of approaching songwriting. I don't song think I would have come up with half of those parts or my own parts if it were just up to me with no drums in the background or anything. So I wanted to make sure it was based more on the rhythm of, of percussion. You get a lot of different uh, little rhythms for sure that you normally wouldn't come up with when, you, when you're sitting around yeah. noodling, you know what I mean? When you come up with a, exactly. a solid foundation in the background, you're coming up with sounds that... You, like I said, you normally wouldn't. Yeah. So that's really interesting. A little bit of insight on that when you're listening to this album. You can uh, think about that. And again, you can pick up this album at the show at the Geekery on the 18th yeah. for sure. Definitely go uh, pick that up. Um, you can also order from our website. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Go. Talk about that. Is there anything else, people, uh, where they could find stuff, you guys? Yeah. Uh, almost all of our merchandise can be ordered on uh, www.prismindband.com. T shirts. CDs, and if you have smiles to in, the, in the Hamilton area, they're in almost all the record shops. Yeah. Oh, there as you well. go. Almost all of them, except. And then there. you guys got a Facebook as well that yeah. Oh, yeah. people could go check out. Yeah. And, and the music's available in all digital formats as well. If people are into downloading, iTunes, Amazon, MP3, Bandcamp, Bandcamp. any of that stuff. Uh, we're not on Bandcamp. Uh, CD Baby. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, make sure you support these guys on any of those sites uh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely can pick up their stuff. Uh, make a I can make a suggestion for one of your album artworks, or not album artwork, uh, uh, merch from your album artwork. You should make a toy of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an action figure or well, something the newest, like that. The newest round of shirts is the album cover. Is it? Okay, yeah. right on. But nice. you're right. It's a, an action figure of some sort would be coming. Yeah, that would be awesome. We just got to give him a name other than Robo Dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, right? Mike, what did you say? He looked like the Queen guy? He looked like the Queen album? Oh, yeah, well, mix between world. that and yeah, uh, yeah. We've heard that. Yeah. And yeah. Big Rattlehead. And I said Ultron. <laughs> Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's pretty sweet. Maybe you could find a cool name out of that. Queen Rattletron? No. Rattletron. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you've, you've, you've definitely heard us rambling about this album a lot, so um, you got to pick this up. It's really sweet. We're going to hear some more music off this album right now. Uh, what, do, what do you guys want to hear off this album? Anything, uh, anything we could plug on right now? 
I would say um, a lot of people have, have really taken to Dagger. Dagger? Okay. And yeah. you have a music video for that one. That's one of two music videos you have, right? Yeah. That one was actually kind of directly turned into a music video. <laughs> oh. That was actually a live shot live off the floor with original audio in this place in London. Okay. Uh, the audio didn't turn out very good. Right? They, did, they, just didn't, they just didn't put the time into it before we showed up. But the uh, the, visu the visual stuff was really cool, right? They had like camera guys everywhere. And oh, like, nice! So then John goes, "Hey, you know what? It's we can sync. It. It's synced up. Like we because Mike plays to a click. Mm -hmm. So even when we did the live performance, he played to a click. So John's like, well, he played to a click. He recorded to a click for the album. So he just went huh? album <laughs> <laughs> no. audio onto the, onto yep, the video. Dawn. Boom. Oh, nice. And that was for the album Dagger. You can go check that out up on YouTube. And uh, your other music video is Our Broken Fate. Yes, that was one that, uh, the most one, recent one we shot. Okay. Uh, as a proper music video. Yeah. And what was that like? Because I haven't done any music videos, right? So, obviously, you're playing, and then you have just a camera guy, a couple camera guys just kind of floating around you. <laughs> I was one of the camera guys. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, nice. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, you know, it, it, again, it's like putting together a puzzle. Um... We really had we we figured out you know how many cameras we had to shoot on on Kelly and on Mike and on Justin and then I had a couple friends you know I shoot the cameras on me so it's I mean it's it's a process it's it's very very uh, you know it's contrived you have mm -hmm. to, the, the process is a contrived process but um, we we've literally shot that video and we did we have footage for another one. In, in the what a three hour span really quickly oh wow we had to <laughs> we rented a school gym oh, really? oh nice it's actually my music room where I teach oh well that works it out it is then. the room where we, we, we film that now, were, so. were you guys plugged in when you were playing the instruments you guys were your yeah, amps we were. were on yeah <laughs> oh right on <laughs> you can't really unplug the drums no, so. no. Mike <laughs> played along <laughs> he played he really played during the video so yep. alright so yeah. I guess we're going to be playing um which is the one you want, a dagger? I said I mentioned dagger, unless you have one that you... Dagger's a good one. All right, Track let's, two, I believe. Let's get you with some dagger here on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. You can check out the music videos on Facebook or on the website. So uh, go check those out. Here's dagger.
I'm Richard Morris, Vice Chairman of the Fire Marshal's Public Fire Safety Council. If a fire broke out tonight while you were sleeping, would you and your family be able to get out safely? Take a few minutes to plan and practice your escape from fire. Make sure that every member knows two ways out of the home and establish a meeting place away from the house, then call the fire department from a neighboring home. Remember, a few minutes of planning could save your life. Hammer Smash, World 3.7 FM, CFPU. This is Hammer Smash, Joey. And I'm Metal Mike over here, and it is not actually time for Hammer Smash Radio. Yeah, if you want to listen to metal, you got to wait till Sunday at 10 p.m. until midnight. Everything from death to doom, black to prog, and power to heavy, we got you. You want the metal? We got it. You can't handle the metal. Every Sunday at 10 p.m. till midnight on 103.7 FM, CFPU. You're listening to Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM, CFBU. You might have noticed that you heard uh, our old <laughs> our old uh, Hammer Smash promo. And uh, it starts out with the beginning of our show saying that we are not live. But we are. That's, that's a lie. In fact, we are. Right we just played that so the fellows in prison mind could hear it. <laughs> we like that one. We think it's kind of funny. But you'll hear a new one next week. we got a new promo that should be uh, in your ears on Hammer Smashed, which... Uh, we're pretty proud of, eh, Metal Mike? Yeah, I would say we, we put a, a solid three hours into it. An unnecessary <laughs> three hours. It could have been five minutes, but it definitely did. That's not how things work out. But anyways, you just heard some more Prism Mind. The song that we played was Dagger off of Disciples by Design. And there was a particular riff in there that uh, caught Joey's ear. And uh, he mentioned... Yeah, really proggy going on. There was a lot of uh, swirling riffs going on. It was pretty oh, sweet. Right, there, right at the pre-solo there. Yeah. Yeah, and you you said uh, some Zappa influence in there. That's what came to mind when I when I came up with it. Yeah, I thought it just kind of had a quirky, almost Zappa yeah,ness to it. it was proggy, weird. I liked it. I dug it. And uh, we were just talking off off the air here and uh, mentioning how back in the day Frank Zappa used to get um, Steve Vai to musically notate conversations so he could replay it. And then Kelly, you mentioned that that's something <laughs> that you have done. <laughs> I have actually. The story uh, stems back to reading that same thing that you mentioned and Steve kind of elaborated he said if you took a, um, a recording of a conversation or speech in general and if you literally stop the recording on every syllable there's a note there and hmm. if you think about it, it there would have to be or else we would all be talking like this yeah. right? <laughs> but there's inflections and there's mm -hmm. ups and downs in, in pitch and stuff so there's actually a note there so I was, I'm just sitting there reading this going what the hell you know? and this is <laughs> early 90s um, Justin, the bass player in Prison Mind, he and I have been working with each other and, and great friends for 25 years. I was at his place and he was doing some recording. I'm just sitting in the room watching him do some recording, a little demo. And his mom comes in the room and she's, you know, interrupting. So she's sort of like, oh, sorry, Justin, blah, 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 blah. She noticed in his garbage can that he had a broken plate of hers, like a real almost like China or something. Mm -hmm. It was a real, like, a very special plate to her, and he had just, he had, it broke in his room, and he threw it in the garbage can. She's losing her mind. <laughs> this whole, and here's the thing, this whole time, she's arguing with Justin about this, he had not stopped the recording. Okay. So all of this is going on the cassette, right? <laughs> and, you know, she finally leaves the room, and she's all pissed off and, and everything, and, uh, and Justin's like, oh, God, and then he looks and he notices that the the cassette is still running, and he's like, "Oh my God, I'm, I recorded that whole thing." And I said, "Justin, give me that cassette." <laughs> <laughs> no way. But yeah, and I totally <laughs> did it. I I took um, his voice, and I took her voice, and they're two separate. It's like an argument going on. Yeah, kinda. exactly. Like, but as a musical arrangement, and I happen to have it right here. You right? do. I do. I took it. <laughs> oh man, let's hear this here. Throw it. No, let's throw it. We'll no, throw it on no, air right it's now. The actual notation. Okay. Right. Your listeners can't see. Yeah, this you're, right not gonna, oh, you're not going to see this. Yeah. But this is literally an, an argument. Yep. As a musical on staff. piece. This is incredible. Long pause. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. I can only imagine. There's like a sigh there. Uh, like, oh, there's, there's. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> now, you, now you got to put lyrics to that. Oh my god. <laughs> you you ever try playing it? Yes. <laughs> Years ago, I tried to play it. It's really, uh, it's really challenging to try to mimic. But that, you're right, that was the kind of stuff that Steve would be tasked with 
That is absolutely insane to do all the time. It was a, a fun project. And I could only imagine things that Frank Zappa would, would speak about. So Oh he would it would sometimes it would be um he would often get a female to just go off. Why a female? Well their voices are higher, it's easier to find the pitch. Right. Generally right. speaking, right? So he would uh yeah, he would often get like some uh girl from the like a friend of the band or whatever to just go off on something. Hmm. And then Steve had to go in and transcribe it and then learn how to play it so he could overdub it on top of the of the speech. Wow. So you hear both the guitar and the voice basically doing the exact same thing. Frank Zappa was on another level, man. That well, guy. he got he got <laughs> other people to be on another level. Yeah, right? fair, fair, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. It influenced yeah. you as well to do that. Yeah, so totally. That is pretty sweet. That's odd stuff. Hey, if you're just tuning in right now, we are with Prism Mind. And uh, we're almost done uh, with Hammer Smash, so we're going to uh, get a couple more tunes going on. We'll get you guys in uh, one of our segments on, on our review uh, songs. Yeah. we got to play a new uh, Immortal song we can squeeze in. Mm-hmm. We're going to come off back after that and uh, you know, talk about what we think, because I know what I think <laughs> about this song. <laughs> and uh, we'll let you know that this new Immortal song does not have a both on it. It does not know because he's busy falling down on festivals. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Video. You guys see that video? It's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. That's we so love good. that video. Uh, but no, we have uh, some new uh, Immortal right now. Uh, the song that they just dropped is called Northern Chaos Gods. We're going to come right back after the song and uh, let you know what we think. But here is Immortal on Hammer Smashed 103.7 FM CFBU. And there you have it. There's New Immortal with the song The Northern Chaos Gods. And uh, that's with their new singer. What's their name, Joe? Or- Demon Oz. Well, Demon Oz is the uh, the guitar player in the band oh, as well. Okay. And um, he's taken over vocal duties because Aboth is doing his solo stuff. And, uh, you know, we've played Aboth's uh, solo record on before. And, uh, Which I, I love. We've, I, I think it's great. Record. I think it's awesome. Aboth's solo record, he's got some great riffs in there. He's uh, It's hardly it, black metal, anyway. It, no, it's, it's just black yeah, and roll, if anything. Black and roll, yeah. That's my personal favorite uh type of black metal is the black and roll stuff anyway so uh, I gravitated towards the bots album uh, I still love the black and chaotic uh, metal as well so you know Northern Chaos Gods has all of that but uh, time for my discrepancies uh, in this go. song our official complaint segment of <laughs> yeah 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 uh, Prison Mind fellas uh, we have um a segment we do every week it's called our complaint segment <laughs> and I guess we can tie this into the complaint segment and uh, too much hi-hat in this song for me too much uh, in the background it's just driving me a little bit too nuts and um it's like it's like um like a beeping it's just like a quick beeping yeah how that would drive you nuts yeah something just constantly you know when someone does that and tapping it's annoying like (laughs) i don't want to hear that through a whole song um the vocals are okay it's still you know he's he's doing a good job but uh a bot's voice it's it's unmistakable you know it's he's got his own thing going on you can't really re- replace that did they kick him out or did he just like you know what i'm not joining the album like i think it's a is a lot of like drama going on oh. a little bit yeah but i don't want to uh, get into that yeah, yeah yeah i don't want to get into that but uh you know a bot's doing great for himself like i said falling down to festivals and uh <laughs> writing a sweet album and getting Smoking high with uh matt, matt pike <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, let me know what you thought. Um, give us a shout out on Hammer Smash one hundred three point seven FM. You can message us. Uh, you know, if you're pissed off that I don't like it, let me know. And uh, if you're if you're happy that I don't like it because you don't like it as well, then that's cool too. We're all that's uh, that's what it's all about. You know, sometimes we play stuff we don't like, and that's fine. That happens. It happens. You could you could <laughs> do it, man. It's totally all right, and you can talk about it, and uh, that's fine. Everyone's got their own opinions. But um, unfortunately, now we're at that sad point of the show. Oh, here we go, Ben. I'm like, you hear it? Oh, it's the ending song. It's the ending song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, you guys, can you guys hear it? Is all right. This is our official ending song because it's it's called Laborer, and um, echoing hardcore. Oh, weeping instant. It's called Laborer, and that means you got to go to work in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's time to end because you got to go to bed. But uh, you know, I really want to thank you guys, John Kelly from thank Prison you. Mind. Thank, thank you so much us. for coming in. Having us. Thanks, Definitely. Jillian, for setting it up. Yes, thank yes. you, Jillian. If you are listening, thank you for setting this up for us. Uh, really glad we got to talk to these guys, get some insight into the band, insight into their uh, personal playing and how what they do as well, and uh, the album. Don't forget, you can see them at the Geekery this Friday, May at May 18th. Uh, pick up their album, listen to their music, have a good time, support the band. It's going to be, uh, it'll be great. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We had a great time last time we were there, and... 
no doubt we will again. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys, again, Thank you. for coming in. Really appreciate that. You guys can go check out the Hammer Smash Facebook, uh, and uh, we will have the set list posted in about uh, 10, 15 minutes after we play one last song to close it up. We will also have the podcast uh, up later on this week. Well, you can hear all the stuff uh, that we talked to with the guys with Prism Mind, and um, yeah, you guys can share that on your Facebook as well. Yeah, get people going on, and uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. Cool. Really good. Had a lot of fun. Uh, Metal Mike, you want to uh, introduce this next tune? Yeah, we're gonna do one last song, and I find it. Um, we, we probably should play it now because we haven't played one Stoner Doom song yeah. on the show at all this week. So we're gonna play a brand new one from the band Sierra. They're a Canadian band coming out of well. <laughs> They wrote down on their uh, on their Facebook page KW Ontario. And I don't really know what KW Ontario. Kitchener like Waterloo. Kitchener Waterloo. Kitchener yeah. Waterloo. That's okay. What, that's what I was thinking. But oh, right on. But um, yeah, we're gonna play a song called Rainbows End. And there's a new one. Yes. Okay, so we're playing two new ones back to back: Immortal Sierra and Sierra. Unfortunately, we can't play the other ones. We're running out of time, but we'll get them on next week. Oh, yeah. We'll get new Skinless next week. We'll get new Graveyard next week, and uh, we have another interview, I believe, next week. Kelly Pink is coming on. And he's talking about uh, the shows that that he's putting on in um, Detour, or uh, that he's uh, right here in St. Catharines. He's got a lot going on this uh, this summer, and we'll get you stoked on that. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs> yeah, we are done. Uh, you guys, thanks again, thanks. Kelly, thanks. John. Thanks, you guys are the best. Guys. Great, great stuff. Uh, we're gonna close it up right here with the song Sierra Rainbows End. I'm Hammer Smash Joey Metal Mike, and as always. May the metal be with you. And also with you.